Legos, Star Wars, video games. The holy trinity of the church of childhood. So when I heard that there existed a thing that brought the three of those together, <laughs> well, welcome to heaven. Here's the body of Christ, the Lunchables pizza. If you could concentrate nostalgia into one single disc, it'd be this one right here. Lego Star Wars, the complete saga. Richard, hit that intro. Man, Lego Star Wars. That intro wasn't a joke, this game is pure nostalgia for me. As a kid, I was big into Legos, and I mean big. Heck, literally, as I'm speaking to you now, I'm going to school to become an engineer, which is basically the adult version of playing with Legos. I'm also, as you can probably tell by the shirt, a huge Star Wars fan, and the original trilogy are probably some of my favorite movies of all time. And I'm sure the more astute viewers among you have noticed that I really freaking love the Wii. So when I found out there was a game for the Wii where you can play through all six of the original Star Wars movies except everything is made out of Lego, uh yeah yeah shut up, shut up a second, here is my money. Or my parents money, I was like eight. Now I know there are more recent versions that include the sequels and stuff, but this is the one I played as a kid, and it's also the only one I own, so I'm playing it. If you've ever played a LEGO game before, you'll know that they're basically all the same. If you haven't, well, they're basically all the same. You guys remember Destroy, Build, Destroy? Well, it's kind of like that, but with a lot more guns and laser swords. You run around, you break stuff, you build stuff, but mostly you break stuff, and they're all super goofy and plain old fun. But one thing they're definitely not is difficult. Like, in any way, shape, or form, a monkey could beat this thing if you gave it enough time. Most enemies go down with a single slash of a lightsaber, you can auto-dodge enemy fire by just spamming shoot, and if you die, you lose a little bit of money, and then respawn in the exact same spot a few seconds later. But is that a problem? <laughs> not in the slightest. Nothing makes you feel more like a Jedi than cutting your way through hordes of cookie cutter enemies. Come here! This version of LEGO Star Wars has 36 main levels, 6 in each movie for all 6 original films. Most of the levels are super iconic parts from the movies that make you say, oh, oh baby, here we go. Saving Princess Leia from the Death Star? Check. The pod race? Now this is pod racing. Blowing up the Death Star? Check and check. And there's also some that are, you know, not as cool. Like Obi-Wan and Luke walking through the desert to get to his house. Riveting. Real talk though, it is pretty cool. You can really tell that the people who made this game were huge Star Wars fans because the attention to detail is crazy. Like, take a look at the infiltrating the Death Star level. The room where R2 hacks into the computer? Perfectly one-to-one. -one. Windows overlooking the Falcon, and the little closet where the droids hide and all. That big room with the elevators and the pointless bottomless pit that would make OSHA crap their pants? You bet. Shooting the cameras as the stormtroopers rush into the detention block? Yup, that's there too. Although, they did leave out the one guy who trips on his way in. So, you know what, I take it back, 0 out of 10. Upon your first romp through a level, you were locked into using the characters that were actually there during the film. So going back to the Death Star level, you've got Obi-Wan, Chewie, as well as Luke and Han and their Stormtrooper getups. Most of the puzzles are designed specifically with these characters in mind, but you might notice some areas that you just can't seem to access with your current squad. For example, early on, Obi-Wan takes off and does the whole thing. But since you're not a Jedi with sick hops, you can't follow him and have to take a different route and just watch him from across the gap. But that, my friends, 
is where the true magic of this game comes in. Free play mode. In your second, third, millionth time playing through a level, you can pick from whatever character you want. And when I say whatever, I mean it. It seems like the requirements for being in this game are, one, you are in one of the original six movies, two, you have a name, and that's it. Those are the only two requirements. Now I know what you're thinking. Surely they can't have every character in here. <laughs> oh, oh, how does he do that? Try me. Boss Nask, Pit Droid, that dude that Lando disguises himself as. Lando disguised as said dude, I could keep going. This game is the sole reason that I know the names of all these deep cut Star Wars characters. Do you guys know who this is? It's Forlom the Bounty Hunter, get wrecked! Heck, they even got some characters in here that weren't in the films at all, like a stormtrooper on freaking summer vacation, and yo, they got my boy Indiana Jones in here, let's go! And if you're somehow not satisfied with everything that's in here, there's even a character creator where you can make your own dude like when you smashed a bunch of minifigures together like some sort of Frankenstein's monster as a kid. Everybody, meet Dave. Yeah, he's a Sith Lord, but honestly, he's a pretty chill dude once you get to know him. Unfortunately, Boba over here did not. And each character has their own unique abilities depending on if they're a Jedi, Sith, Gunner, Droid, the list goes on. And when you start a free play level, you get a whole team with a bunch of different types of characters that you can switch between at will, meaning there is no puzzle you can't conquer. So going back to our Death Star level, just switch to someone who's got their own Jedi or Sith hops, and now you too can do the thing. Seriously, the possibilities are endless. Ever wanted to take down Jabba's sail barge as Indiana Jones? Yeah, you can do that. Regular pod racing too boring for you? Pfft, okay, now this is pod racing. The trench run? You know what? You know what? I take it back. This is pod racing. Fighting Darth Maul as Vader? Look, we all know who the coolest Sith Lord around is. Yo, Maul, Rogue One, have you seen it? And this game encourages you to switch between all your different guys because each level is packed with secrets. Like the 10 hidden mini kits that I would show you, but I've already found them all, so... But by far my favorite thing to find are the red power bricks. Again, I can't show you this because I have already found them all, but each one is literally a cheat code. They have all sorts of crazy effects from giving you boatloads of money, to giving all stormtroopers carrots instead of guns, to making you literally invincible. You can pick and choose which cheats you want to turn on and off depending on how you're feeling, but let me tell you, nothing makes you feel more like a Jedi than running around armed to the teeth with every cheat imaginable. Yes, yes I feel the cheats flowing through me. Is this what it's like to embrace the dark side? Eh, you know what? I'm not gonna complain. It feels good. UNLIMITED POWER! If you couldn't tell by now, this game is super silly. Modern LEGO games either have voice actors delivering a bunch of quippy one-liners, or straight up ripped dialogue from the movies they're based on. And well, 9 times out of 10, I love it when games have voice acting, I think the original LEGO Star Wars is an exception. Nobody ever utters a word, and instead talks in these super funny grunts and sounds that me and my dad still do to this day. That leads to some amazing physical comedy as they try and get the story across without ever talking. Like when Vader reveals that he's Luke's father, and he holds up a picture of him and Padme like it means a damn thing to Luke, who then wily coyotes himself down the chute and hits his nuts twice at the bottom? Yes. Yes. Yes! Yeah! Oh! 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 Believe it or not, the 36 main levels are only one part of this game. These guys went crazy with extra modes, let me tell you. 
If you explore the hub, which is the Moss Eisley Cantina, by the way, nice touch, you're bound to stumble upon some bonus areas, like this place called Lego City, where you basically have to destroy every single thing in this innocent suburban town so that you can collect one million dollars. It's pretty fun, though I always end up just standing in the middle with an ATST, blindly shooting everything around me. Oh man, I really have joined the dark side. Thought that was weird? Try giving a super compressed version of the Lego Indiana Jones commercial a watch, because even that thing's in here. But by far, my favorite extra mode has got to be the Bounty Hunter missions. Screw the Mandalorian, give me a show about Dangar and the squad going to hunt down Admiral Akbar, you cowards. Do it! I am strong with the dark side of the force. And the dark side is a pathway to many abilities some would consider to be unnatural. my new Sith apprentice? No? Well, if you won't be turned, you will be destroyed. What? What? Oh, no! No, no, no! And that's LEGO Star Wars. It may have turned me to the dark side, but I had a hell of a lot of fun doing it. But, as always, thanks for sticking around to the end of yet another episode of the Chip Tide Show. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below and embrace the power of the dark side by clicking that red subscribe button. Or you can show your Jedi pride by following me on Twitter because, uh, you know, blue. Or better yet, do both, Grey Jedi for the win. New episodes of the Chip Tide Show come out every few weeks, but if you don't want to wait that long, there's a lot of videos probably floating around the screen or all over my channel. There is plenty to keep you busy in the meantime and you are bound to find something you like. But, I will see you guys in the next episode. But until then, don't forget to take it easy. Now if you excuse me, I gotta go ice my feet.